Let's just add a panel. And as I press this button, you see that it's searching on the network and it's finding the five stream decks that I have enabled through the actually the, 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 the same device. But the thing that I really want to show you and is excited about today is to show you how Reactor works in terms of configuration. So you can see when I added the panel, it's just popping up right here and I can now click this button and I can add an action to it up here. Hi guys, and thanks for watching this video. If you don't know me, I'm Casper, and I'm the CEO, founder, and chief designer, and also pretty strong engineer in Skahoy. And the Stream Deck integration that we have already talked about in a different video is now being unfolded a little bit more in this video. I wanna show you how this is configured, how you can use it in Reactor, which is the configuration software that runs on Skahoy panels and on the blue pills. So you can see the point of how we can bring these diverse, different user interfaces together for media production control, which is really the vision of this company, to invent the future of media production control. So in this video, we'll be looking at that and I am locked in on my blue pill in this uh, UI here. So uh, one thing I wanted to do would actually be to just go into the packages tab. Let me just make it slightly smaller here and then find the Stream Deck um, package and the stream deck package looks like this just for your information we can set server port we can choose a protocol mode which is related to raw panel define a number of clients and which ips are allowed to connect and how many devices you can connect ad hoc to the device you can also find things like setting large text and no LED bar. These are features that we saw in the first video where if you look at the, the panel, you can see right now we have a graphic rotating on the panel that says license required and it has a, a yellow bar in the top and it had, has some text. And if I change this to large text, for instance, then you'll first and foremost see as I'm rebooting or restarting the application, you can see that after the intro animation, we'll see that the text is becoming large in the displays. Obviously they are, and now you see this license required is rotating once again. But if I remove the no LED bar, for instance, or if I set that option, we have the same, it's restarting, and now you can see that all the buttons will be like you are used to on a Stream Deck, they have just one image behind. But the cool thing about Raw Panel is that it gives you a little bit more, it allows you to set the color of a button, and we are interpreting that by giving you an LED bar in the top by default. This is stuff you can configure for this one. You can also add entries for fixed Stream Decks where you can combine the serial number with a specific port number, and I suspect that's going to be interesting to you because if you do that in an install you want to make sure that your Stream Deck, every time it boots up, gets the same port. Unless, of course, it's a point in itself for you to make sure that panels, no matter which Stream Deck is connected, get the same port on that IP address. But this is something you want to do to make sure that the, the, the panels are always the right panel accessible on a specific IP and port. Now, that's a little bit about configuration. You can read more about that on our Wiki page on the subject. So there you can go. And just to notice, yes, there is a license cost to connecting stream decks to blue pills. So you can read about that on the weekend. You can inquire about what that means by sending us an email. But in any case, you will have always 10 minutes of free usage for every time you restart the application. You can just go and do that for as many time as you want, but you are gonna get tired of it at some point. And that's the moment where you say to yourself, oh, let's buy a license. Okay. Now I want to show you Reactor. And what is that? Reactor is an application that is running on your blue pill. So here is the blue pill that is running the panels, the Stream Deck panels in this demonstration. It is connected to a USB hub. And <laughs> you see this USB hub is pretty populated with stuff. This is all Stream Deck panels. There is a mini, there is an Excel, there is an original one, there is the plus, and there is a foot pill. And all these go into this blue pill and will be uh, controlled and managed by that blue pill as raw panel devices. We saw that in the first video and now we continue with that on the second video here. But on this blue pill, we have a web UI and that web UI is what you see right here. This is Reactor. It's running on the blue pill and with that we can connect to and integrate with the Stream Deck panel. So let's just add a panel. And as I press this button, you see that it's searching on the network and it's finding the five Stream Decks that I have enabled through the actually the, 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 the same device. But uh, it doesn't matter. It could be done by a different blue pill on your network because it's just scanning the network. And now it finds these 
panels. So let's just connect to the um, Stream Deck Plus right here. So I select this one and you see that it's now being detected and being used. And my Stream Deck Plus is right here. It's currently blank. But a little secret is that we can press this one and then it will light up. It will actually send instructions to the panel as if all the buttons should light up white. So that's what it's doing when I'm pressing this button. Okay, so it's an identify function on the panel. But the thing that I really want to show you and is excited about today is to show you how Reactor works in terms of configuration. So you can see when I added the panel, it's just popping up right here. And I can now click this button and I can add an action to it up here. Let's make this slightly smaller so that we can see more of these things. I can create an action on this one. This is a dummy action. And then on my panel, you can see up here that it has some content coming to it because I just added this configuration. Let's make another dummy configuration. And you can see that on the second button right here. Uh, I could even if I wanted to uh, enable uh, so that if I press these buttons that it's identifying what I am um, uh, seeing in my UI. So if I wanted to change this one, I could just press that and it would light up and I could change my actions over here. The, the point is that within the parameters field, if you edit that one, you can actually search for devices, but you need to add those devices out here. So if you want to control various devices in broadcast and AV, you would just add these devices from a list like this one. So let's just type in ATEM and you have a ton of different ATEM models right here. So let's add one of these. We don't have an IP for it, so we'll just skip that step. But if I go back here and if I click this button, I would be able to now find, select my device and then find a, um, a such as the cut function on the switcher. And I would be able to pick this one and then put it on this button like that pretty easily. In the first videos about this integration, I showed you this tool, which is the Raw Panel Explorer tool. And here you can scan the network for Raw Panel devices. You find the five stream decks that is currently connected to the USB hub and then to the blue pill. They are all on the network. So I want to dive a little bit into the details of what you find in here. So let's just do this and then let's look at what the uh, Stream Deck Plus gives us. Well, first, when you connect to something with the Raw Panel Explorer, you see the serial, you see which clients is connected to it. You can um, see what is the boot count, how many hours, minutes has it been running. See, some of these things wouldn't be relevant, like CPU usage would be for a Skahoy panel. But there are a lot of interesting things. For instance, you could um, sleep the panel, like say uh, sleep should be in five seconds. So now it's actually sleeping or you could wake it up and say no, never sleep. You can also uh, play a little bit with the full brightness of things and clear the displays like this. You can change what is the brightness anyway of the panel. So for instance, uh, as we have seen before, we could um, we can actually mark multiple of these. If you hold down shift, you can send multiple um, uh, images or color informations over to it. So now I'm just playing with that. I can use the color picker to pick a color and then um, change it here by by this. And all of these things, once again, I'm just saying it because it's it's the real point of having this. That is, you can also explore what are the commands being sent over with the raw panel protocol to the panel. And you can now simulate this or you can do that yourself using a, um, a telnet uh, or TCP connection to it. It's also possible to send over te text images, grayscale images, and so on. So you can really see what these are, are looking like. Uh, right now, you won't see the commands for that because we are sending it to multiple devices or multiple uh, hardware components. But if you just pick one, then you'll see what is the command for these images as well. OK, there's a lot of things to do there. You can even select files if you uh, want to have fun doing that. Then uh, let's see if I can find a little family photo here. And there you go. Here is an image of my daughter. OK, so um, in this application, the um, it would be pretty cool if we could look a little bit at the uh, topology down here. So the topology is the information sent by the panel to you that reveals what is hardware component number one, two, three, and four. Because if you look at the information that's being sent when I set a color, for instance, it says hardware component color for hardware component number one, value 132. And by looking at this table, you can see that component number one is a button. It has RGB LED capability. It has a display with these pixel dimensions. And that's 
the most important information you can read out of this. You also see if you scroll that the encoder is down here. Number nine has something else. And by the way, if I am operating the components, you are actually getting information about the triggers being sent over. So as I'm now pressing and so on, you can explore the trigger values. Let's do it the same for the buttons here. I'm just pressing the buttons and you see those messages are being shown in this col column here, the events. Um, actually, you may be interested in knowing how are we handling in raw panel the, the, the touch field here. Well, I actually set it up as an encoder because what you're most likely to want to do is to swipe. So to make it really easy for you, if you go forth and back here, you can see that we are swiping and we are swiping on two components. There is this one, number 14, which is a full swipe and you will always get values on this one. So you can see all the time this one is changing while the lower ones will change depending on whether I'm swiping within a specific one of these fields. So each of or above each of the encoders, there's like an area on the touch screen which is dedicated to that encoder. And you can choose to use that or not. But I'm basically offering you information about if a swipe is being done within that field. But you could completely ignore this down here and only go with the big swipe, for instance, for changing pages. So the display tiles here are um, uh, separated from the encoder. So it would be your obligation to make sure anything happening to the encoder would then be reflected on the display. That's entirely up to you. The only thing you're offered is really the pixel dimensions of this one and the information that these display tiles would be color. So if I select this one and send stuff over, then you can see, obviously, I am now putting color stuff into these. I could also upload an image and uh, you will see how that got encoded uh, right here. Yeah, so what else do we want to do on this uh, ex exploration of the topology? Um, I think that's basically it maybe. I, I just wanted to show you how easy it would be for you to explore the raw panel integration of the Stream Dex. Um, I could, of course, quickly show you for another one how that would look. So here is the Stream Deck original. So if I connect to this one, we're getting pretty much the same. So I can press this button and you see the triggers are arriving, but I could also select the number of them and then I could send over uh, color and display information to these. So same thing is, is um, really being um, being done on, on the um, Stream Deck original and any of the other Stream Decks. If you want to know more, go to the Wiki page for the Stream Deck integration and uh, consider writing an email to Innovation Lab because I love to hear what you think about this and how you could see this applied, what ideas you have and so on. It's always so much fun to be in touch with you guys.